Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 105 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm inoculating my energetic princesses. Remember, these are the guys who have that lightning effect that cause lightning, and I said, hey, lightning's cool. Why not? Let's leave it there. It looks neat in this age. <laughs> it did, until it destroyed my nifty little uh, Steve's Cart tree farm thing, and I said, eh, I'll work around that. I'll go ahead and just set it up as a different thing. Well, guess what the lightning did to me today? It destroyed the wood on top of my alviary. For some reason, even though I've got clear glass here, the lightning is sneaking through. I can only assume that's what's happening because every now and then I look and my I'm missing an oak slab and my alviary is missing and it's like not formed anymore. So if I want this to like run consecutively without any issues, I should probably get rid of the lightning. Luckily, it's pretty easy to get yourself a none effect serum, which is what I did. So, uh, you know, went ahead and got that serum off of one of the drones. I have had it for a while actually. I think I got it. It was one of the first serums I got. So I went ahead and uh, tossed it into my synthesizer and then tossed it into my purifier. Now I'm inoculating my bees with the none effect serum. This will remove the lightning effect, uh, causing no more lightning to strike nearby my base and to allow my diamandy princess to run without problem. Cool. So we've already got 11 diamond shards um, and it's not like that's a small number it's actually uh i'm pretty sure that this thing got destroyed like shortly after i finished recording the last episode so i don't think they've been running for a while um but i'm thinking now's a good time to go ahead and uh speed this up a little bit so let's see how we can make the most efficient alviary possible all right, guys, so to kick this up a notch, let's go ahead and make this as efficient as possible. Now, there's some important things you're going to need to know to make this as efficient as possible. Number one, there's a whole bunch of math behind how to make this as efficient as possible. I'm going to go ahead and just do some simple stuff. If you want to go into, like, the supremely complicated math behind how all this is good and works, there's plenty of posts on the FTB forums, and you can Google around for, like, Max, Apiary, Alviary, Frames, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but what I want to get is some frame housings. So let's make that a reality. So for this we're going to need some golden electron tubes and some iron. So golden electron tubes I'm going to need a bunch of gold and redstone. Cool. So let's get some gold and redstone. Nice. Over to our electron tube maker thingy which should be around here somewhere. Did I ever set that up? Carpenter. Maybe I never set one of those up. Did I put it in here? Huh. Maybe I didn't. Ah, to do. Set up one of those nifty gadgets. Thermionic fabricator. And glass. There we go. And I guess... I don't know where I want to put it now. Mm, it won't run on EU. It does require MJ. I guess I could just stick it right here because it would be easy. Just gonna need a piece of redstone. So yeah, trust me when I say there's a ton of math here and it's complicated. So you guys can go in there, this can go in here, and we're good to go. So just grab a few of these things, I don't know. That sounds like a good number for now. And then we're gonna want some frames. So let me snag this bee out of here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a few of the frames. One, two, three. I'm pretty sure I can replace all of these. Hmm, that might wanna leave as a normal frame housing. Two. So I'm gonna go with nine. Nine frame housings. That sounds like a plan. So let's get this upgraded to frame housing. There it was. No, that's a sieve. Frame housing. Cool. Oh, need a little bit more gold. There we go. Frame housings. So I'm going to replace the actual building blocks here with frame housings. 
And this thing should then reform into a nice little alveary. I don't think you can replace these blocks, but pretty much every other block you can. So like this one here, the ones that eventually form with four honeycombs, those are the ones you can't replace. But I believe every other block could be replaced if you want. Now, based on what I've read, your worst case scenario, you're gonna need nine frame blocks for your highest productivity, okay? Um, your best case scenario, you probably need like three or four. Uh, it all depends on the default default speed of the bee, uh, the, the modified speed of the bee, there's all kinds of math, like I said. You don't want to worry about it. Just trust me. Uh, what I'm also going to do is grab some frames. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and use like some really good frames. But if we're going to automate this, which by the way we are, um, don't worry about using the best ones because here's something really nice and important to know. Um, all frames give you the same modifier boost. The only difference is uh, how long they last. So let me show you. So the untreated frame, which is probably around here, gives you two times production with a durability of 80. The impregnated frame gives you two times production with a durability of 240, and the proven frame, two times production, durability of 720. So why use expensive frames if we're gonna automate it? And untreated frames are easy. It's just some string and some sticks. So how am I on string? As a matter of fact, I have a decent amount. It would be really nice if my mob farm could produce string for me. I'm gonna have to manually spawn spiders though. Um, otherwise, I could grow cotton or I could, you know, do a sheep farm and just, you know, convert the wool into string. Um, it's doable probably with macerators. So lots of options, obviously, right? Uh, pulverizers also can do it. Oh, that's cool. Pulverizers could be four. That's good to know. So. Eventually, if we run low on string, no big deal, right? So let's set up an automation system to handle this. I'm going to go ahead and think what I probably want to do is an interface. And while that's cooking, I want some item ducks. Interface should be done by now and some cable. So let's automate this to the best of our ability. The only other thing we're going to need to do is teach this guy how to make frames. But of course, I'm going to want regular old sticks, not all those crazy things. So let's just grab one of them. You can use any sticks, obviously, but if you're going to set this up, you should use the one that your system knows how to make, aka regular old sticks. Cool. So now I should be able to request an untreated frame. Let's do that. If I already got one, I could craft them if I want. Let's come over here and get ready to automate this. So what I'm gonna do is basically that. Um, it doesn't really matter. This is kind of why I wanted it to be out one from the wall. So that looks cool. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this guy down right here then, and we will set these guys up to extract. And then I just need some pneumatic servos. Wasteful to use two pneumatic servos here? Yes. Am I worried about the resources? No. One. Two. And we will set this guy to ignore. So you're always going to pull out. And this thing, keep an untreated frame in here at all times, please. And it should, if we craft items when needed for exporting, be good to go. Uh, I just need to attach some cables, so let me do that off camera real quick. And then we just simply connect our cables here. Shouldn't be too bad. There we go. If we go inside now, we should see some frames getting produced and sent through into here. Nice. So you can see they're producing them. Now eventually these will back stuff because they're only allowed to have one frame in each frame housing. Um, so this will burn through our string pretty quickly. I won't lie. It's going to really like eat up a lot of string. Uh, and it, you know, I mean, wood I don't worry about. We got tons of wood. Uh, so I might need to set up a wool farm at some point. Uh, now eventually these will all back stuff into here. You can see that they're back stuffed. Not a problem. Once these frames start to die out, uh, they'll go ahead and get replaced. So if we take a look now, let's keep an eye on this bee and see what happens. 
Yep, see how he just produced a diamond shard on that tick and he produced two honeycombs? That's good. If we keep an eye on this, what should happen is every tick, which by the way is every 27.5 seconds for bees, uh, we should find out that we're getting a diamond shard every life tick of the bee. So pretty much 100% chance to get a diamond shard uh, with the nine frames. It might be a little overkill. Like I said, there's way math involved that I didn't bother to do. This bee might be able to do it with maybe a little bit less, but nine's the most you'll ever need from what I can understand. So you can see now we're getting a diamond shard every tick. Nice. So this should equate to about every 30 seconds you get a diamond shard uh, times nine. So every four and a half minutes we're getting a diamond. I'll take that. And one more thing I'll note here is that we can swap this queen out for any other queen. So if we happen to get to a point where we don't need diamonds as much anymore, and we do start needing more redstone to power our base, not a problem. Swap out our bee, done deal. Speaking of that redstone bee, she should be done getting uh, taken care of. There we go. Uh, so we'll put them back together right over here. Should be fine. All right, back in a few. So just in case you guys had any doubts, uh, I want to say maybe 20 minutes, I don't know, not too far, but I just got 11 diamonds. Haha, <laughs> look at that. Nice. So diamond problems are pretty much solved, I would say. Um, why don't we look at how our string is doing? Not bad. I mean, we've used maybe 50 pieces of string or so, so that will probably go pretty fast. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pretty much plan for maybe a wool farm in our future. That might not be a bad idea. A nice simple one. Doesn't have to be overly complicated. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at our energy situation at the moment. Uh, I just toggled my lever again. It seems like we're producing just a little bit less energy than we're using, which means overall we have a deficit. Um, eventually this thing runs dry. I toggle the switch for a few seconds. It gets some heated redstone into the generators. They really quick refill my resonant energy cell, and then it's good for a little while. I'm getting kind of tired of having to come down here and do that. Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun. So let's come up with a new and uh, even better way to do power. The redstone generator is a nice, like, boom, we want a massive amount of power right now. But the problem is I can't turn them on and off very easily. So in the end, there's basically two things that happens with this. Number one, uh, we're using a lot of redstone, which, let's be fair, with all the mods we have and, like, tons of mods use redstone as a crafting recipe, we really don't want to burn through that much. And even though we've got bees upstairs producing some of it for us, eh, you know, it's, it's not going to keep up with the demands. The second thing is these things produce way more power than we need um, and the problem being that while it's nice for a good quick burst of power uh, there's no way to turn them on and off when the power system gets low so like we can't even apply a redstone signal or do anything to turn them off uh, as it stands right now so what are we going to do? Uh, I'm thinking let's come up with a nifty way to use something that's just a little bit more efficient and that we don't really need for anything else. What have we got in here that can produce a ton of power that we don't really need for anything else? Oh, I do have lots of uranium ore. Ooh, should I build a nuclear reactor? That sounds fun. But Direwolf, you're trying to charge up your resonant energy cell. How are you going to use a nuclear reactor to produce redstone flux energy? I'm glad you asked. We'll find out after I build the nuclear reactor. That I'll save as a little secret for later. For now, let's come up with a place where we're going to build our first, and maybe only, we'll see, nuclear reactor. Um, I'm thinking, where should I put this thing? Let's come up with a good place that's kind of safe, because these things are a little bit dangerous. I mean, I'm going to build a stable one for you guys, but we should still be safe and considerate about where we're placing a nuclear reactor in our base. Good question. Where are we going to put it? How am I doing for diamonds? I've got a lot of diamonds. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. 37 diamonds. Oh, yeah. Um, as you can probably guess, there's been a little bit of a time lapse between last segment and this one. Uh, but yes, let's get started working on a nuclear reactor and see what kind of fun we can have. All right, guys, so one of the first things you're going to want to do as soon as you want to start doing some serious industrial craft work is teach your automated crafting system, all the fun things that you can make with uh, industrial craft, because there's a lot of crafting stuff, uh, steps for a lot of the industrial craft stuff. So you can see here I just taught in a bunch of the different plates that you need, uh, some of the more complicated recipes. So for example, one of the things I'm gonna need to get started here is an ore washing plant. So to get the ore washing plant, if any guy wants to sync up, is made like so. Uh, I'm gonna need a machine block, two electric motors, and an electric circuit. 
So let's first get a machine block. And I know I'm going to need a couple of these. And motors, I'm going to need two of them. Those are definitely a lot of crafting steps. And I forgot about electronic circuits. Those are definitely a lot of uh, steps to make. So let's definitely teach that thing how to go. Electric circuit. There it is. Um, so yeah, we're gonna wanna go that way. And I don't know that I taught it how to make copper cable, but I did teach it how to make copper uh, wires. So that's cool. So we can see here, we taught it how to make copper wires. So now I'll throw cable and electronic circuits in there. And I might as well, while I'm at it, go ahead and toss this in because we'll need it at some point. And I am now out of blank patterns, but I was crafting some. So we should have plenty showing up here. Oh, good, cool. And electronic circuits, let's go ahead and request like 10 of those. And how am I for rubber? I should have a ton, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we've got a ton in our barrels down there. So I shouldn't have to worry about rubber for a while, but if I do need to bring up a rubber tree farm again, I obviously definitely could. Uh, so let's try that ore washing plant now. Hooray, I can make one. Very cool. Uh, and then the only other thing we're going to need is, what's it called? Um, and you can figure out what you need to make with this thing. Not that thermal centrifuge, that sounds about right. Oh yeah, this is a complicated one. So I'm gonna need a wire and a couple, or I'm gonna need a motor and two coils. And then I need that nifty little laser, the mining laser. So this guy requires an energy crystal also requires some advanced alloys, which I should teach this thing how to make. So, energy crystal requires nine energium dust. Nine energium dust is made like so, and for diamond dust we need to macerate a diamond. So, let's get this set up. And I'm thinking I might want to see... I have macerator and induction furnace over here and extractor, but I don't think I've set up a compressor yet, believe it or not. Wow, yeah, so I definitely want to do that. Probably stick that guy right there. So let's get a compressor, because we're gonna want one. I mean, I, I probably have a manual one set up. I'm sure I've got a compressor over here somewhere. Yeah, so I've got manual ones, but I definitely wanna automate some of these things because we're going to want to um, have a lot of automation around what we're making. So let's get a compressor. That shouldn't be too bad, except I don't have any smooth stone. Isn't it funny when something as simple as smooth stone is what you don't have enough of? Shouldn't be a problem for too long. So let's try that again. Compressor, nice. And we might as well get some cabling here. I'll get the gold cable. Always forget. Sometimes hotkeys don't work until you open that thing. Okay, that's how it is. So we'll get the compressor going here, and then we'll be able to uh, get an interface set up. I'll show you guys a neat trick with these things too, by the way. If we throw an interface in here, we get two of them, just so that's easier. And then we're going to want a, what's it called? I know there's a fluid one. Ejector, that's what I'm looking for. So ejector upgrades are very useful. Check this out. So I need some more copper cable pistons. That shouldn't be hard to do, I would hope. Ah, I have to teach you how to make the cutter, that's right. There we go. Ejector upgrades actually make for some really neat stuff. What's wrong with pistons? Missing, ah, let me fix that. I'll be right back. 
There we go, all fixed. Uh, let's take a look at these ejector upgrades and how we can use them. In the meantime, let's see if my interfaces are done. Waiting on glass. All right, so ejector upgrades are cool because what you can do with them is you click on the side of a block. So if I click like up there, uh, you'll note that it's now output to the bottom side. If I click on this side, it's now output to the top side. So whatever side of the block you click on determines the output face that it's going to automatically eject to. So for example, if we look this way west, so when I right click on this, it should be outputting now to the west, right? Like this is east, so this side of the block is the west side of the block. Make sense? Uh, this direction is south, so this side of the block is the north side. And you'll note that that now ejects to the north. So I want it to actually eject to the top. And the reason I want to do that is, let's see, how's this thing? Induction furnace is clean, so that means we should have interfaces now. When I want to go ahead and automate things like the compressor, or the extractor, all I need to do then is rotate these guys down. And we're gonna tell the ejector to eject to the top side. So what's cool is now, remember, any item that lands inside an interface that's not in the export config is going to teleport right back into the A system. So we don't need to configure an output side for the compressor. What's going to happen is as soon as it's done doing its compression work, it's going to say, all right, no problem, I got this. And then it's going to immediately eject it out. So let's take a look, for example, mixed metal ingots. Oh, I better get some tin, bronze, and iron plates because that Calclavia core has got an ore dictionary thing going on that always messes with me. So let's get a tin, a bronze plate, and an iron plate. And let's set this up. So I know we're gonna need some alloys in the future anyway, so I might as well teach this thing how to make it. So we can do iron plates, bronze plates, and tin plates, and code that guy. And then, grab one of these and teach it that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So one of these equals one of these and toss that in my compressor. Cool. So now watch what happens if I request some more advanced alloys. Like we'll request 10 of them because I know I'm going to need a bunch later anyway. Uh, what it should wind up doing is it'll do the compression um, and I should probably snag my overclocker upgrades. And you'll note that it just disappears, right? It's getting ejected into the ME interface and then put right into the AE system. Neat trick, right? So pretty cool, nifty little gadget for you guys to know. So let's get that laser. I'm going to have to macerate my diamonds. So we can handle that no problem. Yeah, you've seen the ejector upgrades before, obviously, but that's just a neat trick with interfaces to use them. And let's get our energy diamond now. So this guy is going to need energy and dust. And you don't need a ton of these, so that's why I'm not teaching the recipe to the AE system. I probably won't catch this guy. No, I don't think so. So can I make my laser now? Hopefully. Yep, just need an advanced circuit. Remember I told you there was a good reason I was teaching the autocrafter how to make that? Cool. Now I can make the thermal centrifuge, which is the last component for all the processing of uh, this system that we're going to need here. Oh, you know what? I probably need it. Do I need an advanced machine casing or is it a machine casing? Might be advanced. And if that's the case, yeah, I should teach this thing how to do advanced casings. So I'll be back once I've got this thing set up, because these things are always a nuisance to craft as well. So we know how to do advanced alloys. Uh, carbon plates aren't too bad. Uh, I just need to teach it this component. And, oh, it's really just three? Cool. All right, be right back. All right, there we go. Just got the last of this stuff set up, so now I know how to make these guys. So it should not be a problem for me to make advanced machines. Cool, nice and easy. 
All right, so I've got a macerator, I've got an ore washing plant, and I've got the thermal centrifuge. Those are the three machines that are gonna be required to do what I need to do with uranium. However, before I really start, why don't I... Yeah, this guy, you're coming with me. I should grab a lever too while I'm up here. And some food probably. Because, and you'll see, just trust me on this fact, uh, you're not going to want to operate without this helmet and suit and all this stuff. So let's real quick just put together, I'm thinking maybe right here so that it's like right where I remember all the time. As soon as I walk in this room, I should put this suit on. Um, so let's throw the lever here. There we go. Nice. That's important. Trust me, get the scuba helmet, the hazmat suit, and the rubber boots. If you don't, you will regret it. Just, that's all I'm going to say. Um, so let's see. I'm going to put these in the order that you're going to need them in. So, macerator, thermal centrifuge. No. Macerator, let's see. Do I have the... Yeah, or washing plant, and then thermal centrifuge. So what do we need to do in order to get our nuclear reactor going? There's a lot of steps involved in this, guys, uh, but the first thing we need to do is get ourselves some fuel rods. Well, that's probably the last thing we need to do, but that's what I'm setting up the work for now. So in order to get this fuel rod, we need to make enriched uranium fuel, which comes from processed uranium and tiny piles of uranium. So this regular old crafting recipe gets you enriched uranium. In order to get uranium, you need to either uh, thermal centrifuge it. Yeah, you definitely need a thermal centrifuge. You can either centrifuge uh, crushed uranium ore, which comes from the macerator, and you'll get one tiny pile and four uranium, or you can go ahead and get um, purified crushed uranium. And you get a little bit more for doing this, uh, but the way to get purified crushed is by throwing crushed through an ore washing plant. And you'll see that you'll get purified crushed and a couple of little things. So ore washing plant is going to be necessary. However, this guy, uh, in order to wash the ores, is going to need some water. So let's get an aqueous accumulator or something along those lines set up for that. Ah, so close. So I need a machine casing and more glass. There you go. Aqueous accumulator, and how about some buckets? And I know where I can find some water. So this guy's going to want to go right about here. Darn it, I did not mean to break that. I have to make myself a new thermal. Ah, that was the expensive one, too. Dire derp! So this guy goes here. And these water buckets can go here and here. All right, let me get myself another one of those stupid things, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I just ran some of my cabling down here so that I can have my P2P connector set up, and I will load those memory settings, and that should then start charging up my machines. Good, they're getting power. That's what I wanted to see. Uh, so that's definitely a good sign. We'll, we'll most likely want um, some stuff down here. Now, this thermal centrifuge, if I remember correctly, is much the same as the induction furnace. So if you apply a redstone signal to it, he might keep himself heated up. There we go, you can see the heat building up. It's gonna drain a little bit of power, but this will be nice because um, it does need to be heated up before it can work at all. So go ahead and just probably turn that on unless you're really worrying about power. But since we're building a nuclear reactor, we shouldn't have to worry about power too much longer. All right, so let's run up here, and I might wanna make just a few more overclockers for these machines. That would probably not be a terrible idea. I'm pretty sure there was a component to my overclocker making system that 
has probably not moved over from my old base. So overclockers require this stuff, right? So half of that's easy. The 10k coolant cells, well, that's not too bad. Just 10. All right. Where is my this guy? 10 plate. Oh, you know what it is? It's probably the water bucket. Yeah. Uh, let me automate getting water. So even though this isn't like really in a room, it's just super convenient to do this. So I'm going to set it up so that we get this here. We can say insert on the top. And then this guy will be your output side. We'll put in an import bus here. We'll put in an interface here. We can rotate this downwards. We'll just need a little bit of redstone energy conduits. And we'll want to teach something that, you know, I'll use water bucket here. And then we'll say empty bucket equals water bucket. There we go. Now I can make all the overclockers I want once this is done. It just so happens that this was the perfect place to set this up because everything else I need is like right here. So not inside a room, but oh well. Another thing I need now is some cabling to go in there. That should be it. Nice. So now if I request a water bucket, I should have no problem getting one. Nope. I have to put this in here. Cool. Begin. And it takes a second, obviously, because the fluid transposer is not instant, but there you go. And now I can ask for overclocker upgrades. And I'm going to want like 20 of them. Why not? So obviously that's pretty darn quick. Nice. So the only slowpoke part of this is now waiting for this fluid transposer to do its thing. Which you are currently doing what now? Okay, I see. Nice. So it's now working on coolant cells. Okay, works for me. All right, back in a minute, guys. All right, let's get to processing uranium. So uh, I just want to test that everything works out correctly here, and then we'll automate it in a minute. But in order to get this, we're going to want to first macerate your uranium ore, and that'll break it down into crushed uranium ore. Then you want to go ahead and throw it in the ore washing plant. That'll tidy it up and wash it off for you so that you get some nice stuff. Cool. And then finally, you're going to want to throw your thermal uh, centrifuge in there. So yeah, that thing's definitely draining a lot of power having those many uh, overclocker upgrades. So I'm going to have to see if I can get more power dumped into that thing. I mean, I am dumping quite a lot of power through the network. I mean, I'm using, what, an MFA here? So that's 512 EU per tick. Wow, I'm not sure how much that machine uses with six overclockers in it, but I might need to cut that down. That's pretty much what I was testing, is I knew that's a power-hungry machine. Um, so let's go ahead and cook these up real quick. Just want to see with a few less overclockers in it. Um, if that's going to be a problem for us or not. With four, are you cool on power usage? Yes, you're eh, still draining a little bit, believe it or not. With three, three seems to be pretty much the break-even point. At least for the current power supply that I've got. Yeah, three seems to be breaking even. All right, let me see what the deal is, because I'm wondering if, like, how much power is allowed to go through those P2P connector guys, or if I should just run gold cable down directly, because it's not too far from here. Maybe if I move this to the other side of the room, it might be a better idea, and just connected it directly to that gold cable. Let me try that and see what happens. Oh, yeah, here you go. I accidentally had this stuff in my inventory and took off my armor suit. See how much damage I'm taking from radiation? Definitely nasty. Luckily, I happen to have this talisman of remedium in here. That actually repairs it. I did not know that that worked on that stuff. 
That's cool. All right, let me throw that away, and then I'll get back to moving my stuff. All right, guys, we're back, and we have to wrap up the episode here in just a minute, but I want to test to see if we're going to have better power connections with our thermal centrifuge, the overclocker upgrades. Heat's going to take a second to catch up here, uh, but as soon as it does, then we'll be able to test this with the uranium and see how it works out. So as you saw, there's definitely a reason to wear this uh, nice little armor suit that I've got going on. Uh, let's see. We'll get this stuff cooked up. This will take just a minute. I'll be back in like one minute. All right, guys, I think we've hit the heat threshold that we need because it's about 3,000 heat that you need to cook this up. So let's see. Oh, uh, still draining, believe it or not. Okay, cool. So I guess it wasn't anything to do with that P2P connector thing. I thought that might be causing it. So we might just need more power here. So maybe I should get an MFSU. Ho, ho, ho. That would be cool. I mean, machines don't explode, so why not? All right, for now, we're going to wrap up the episode. I'll come back. Yeah, be really careful. Don't forget to... Yeah, that was close. I always look in the top left corner there to see if I have, like, the, the meters. And if they're not there, I'm like, oh, right. Don't forget that. So, um, definitely going to come back next episode and get back to some nuclear engineering. Uh, we will, next episode, hopefully, um, build a nice secure area that we can put a nuclear reactor in. Then we'll build the nuclear reactor itself, start generating power, and also we'll look into how we can get that power converted into RF that we can then store inside our energy cells. Sound like a plan? I hope so. All right, guys, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.